So I, I want to go through sort of navigating the pulse chain and then talk about uh, like where you can put your funds to sort of yield, not only like staking with Hex, which is what I also want to talk about as well, but liquidity providing, whether it's on PulseX or PHUX, which I think is another good platform for liquidity providing. But over here, just to start, we got a Pulse Coins list. We went over this last uh, open open mic, and uh, this is just a really good resource. This has pretty much the entire Pulse Chain ecosystem on one website. If you're looking for a place to buy Pulse, it's all here. You you can see all the different um, service providers that'll sell you some Pulse Chain, uh, whether it's no KYC or it does have. I think these are all no KYC right here right now, but. Occasionally, there is some KYC options like uh, centralized exchanges that we can purchase Pulse off of. But yeah, we got stats here, multi charts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But getting into the sort of juicy stuff, I kind of want to talk about um, where you can gather your liquidity for efficient order execution. So I think we, you guys were sort of talking about this earlier in the beginning of this stream. I think the uh, Tetra guy said he was building an aggregator where we could have uh, limit orders, et cetera, et cetera. I'd, I'm not sure currently if we have limit orders over on the Pulse chain, but one thing we do have is just uh, regular aggregators. So right currently we have Piteas, and this is um, it's a pretty it's a pretty good aggregator. It does find you the best price for whichever token you're looking for. If we go over to PulseX, for example, uh, if we go to exchange, I'm going to use Icosa for my example, just because I kind of focus on Icosa a lot on my channel. But like, let's say we want to take uh, USDC and we want to take a thousand and dump it into Icosa. If we're in this V1 um, Pulse X pair, we're going to eat a bunch of slippage, right? Now, one of the easiest things you can do is just click it over to the V2. It, I'm surprised a lot of people aren't really checking on this. Um, I know Richard also says that he's added routing between each of the different pairs and stuff, but it's, it's a bit iffy sometimes. So if you're looking for optimal order execution, uh, ch check your prices both on V1 and V2, just to make sure that you're getting the best price. Because I know the V1 pairs include all the farms, but if your coin isn't necessarily included in one of these farms, it might have lower liquidity in V1. So you should probably use the V2 pairs where most of the liquidity is at. If not, another good place to find some liquidity, Icosa. If you're if you're looking to purchase Icosa, Fox is also a good place to gather some. Also, as well as like Hedron and any other ecosystem asset as well. But not only that, um, Right now, currently, Hedron and Icosa, the yield has sort of dropped off. There's not as many HSIs in the auction house as there used to be, and there's not as many people uh, using the buyback as there used to be as well. So how Hedron yield was uh, usually calculated before was whenever someone would use the HSI buyback, the contract would borrow all that Hedron from the HSI, and it would pay it out towards uh, Hedron and Icosa stakers. Or, sorry, just Icosa stakers. Hedron just get Icosa. So, since we aren't having as much volume in the HSI markets, the yield for Hedron and Icosa aren't as much currently. But over here on Fox, a uh, couple of these pools, uh, specifically the Alex Hedron Maxi pool, it's pretty good. At, so, one of your biggest risks when liquidity providing is the impermanent loss. So, that's basically if... Um, one asset decides to outperform the other asset, you're going to be left with whatever asset goes up less. So you might have been better off just holding your coins liquid in certain scenarios. But the in, the incentive for liquidity providing is that you earn some sort of incentive token or some sort of reward that mitigates or uh, overcompensates for your impermanent loss. So another, currently... just sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to add another point into that that you're you're, you're talking about. I just had a client that was doing a lot of liquidity providing with V two and V three, and the way that it looks like on 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 um, on, on there uh, is that I think the V three is showing that you have an NFT now. So the way that it looks like is that you have that transaction and you purchase an NFT, even though that's not the case. So when you're doing liquidity providing, another factor that you should consider on the tax point is that you show a disposition of the asset 
in, in, in a transaction where it's hard to for you to argue that if this is not a taxable event. As a matter of fact, from the perspective of the IRS, we, we will then see it as a transaction that needs to be recorded as a disposition. And therefore, if you have gain on that asset that you have now put into the liquidity providing, you have effectively uh, disposed of it and therefore pay capital gains on that uh, transaction. So the fact that now you have a, a accumulated capital gains, it also affects the cost of the credit and providing in addition to impermanent loss. So the taxing itself is going to be a big implication for the credit providing. And I just wanted to point that out because not a lot of people track uh, their stuff through tax software and therefore never know. And it comes as a surprise when that is an effective gain. And not only do they lose an impermanent loss, but they also have to pay now taxes on, on something that they didn't really make a lot of money on. So I just wanted to add that. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Good point. So that is a very good point. Um, make sure you guys are accounting for everything and recording for everything properly. Again, consult tax advisors if you have more questions on this sort of stuff. I'm not really an expert, but we got an expert on the panel, which is great. But I mean, just in terms of uh, just the basics, uh, if you were to go ahead and stake Hedron or if you were to go ahead and provide liquidity, it looks like the APRs over here are a little bit better. Uh, depending on the taxes and the different, um, I guess, things you would have to go through depending on each of the scenarios, there might be like in permanent losses that you can't account for or different things that you can't um, like taxes that aren't you not you aren't necessarily accounting for up front. But uh, either way, if you're looking to earn, I guess, some extra some extra coins and you understand the tax implications, then I think these pools are a good place to come over and provide some liquidity. Uh, not only this Alex Hedron Maxi pool, but you have a lot of uh, a lot of good pools here, like the Pulsex single sided staking. Um, if you're looking for, I guess, like a non taxable sort of pool, I think if you use the bridge stable, I believe if you do, you, would you know anything if you were to buy a stable coin for one dollar and provide liquidity and I guess it maintains its value? Would you only pay capital gains on your, um, I guess, incentives? Is that how that would work? Yeah, I mean, if, if it doesn't really change in value, I mean, a stable coin is not really going to change too much in value when it pegs out of the dollar. It's going to be very little. So I, I don't, I, don't, I think that that would be kind of the safest way to do it in case you're thinking about capital gains in mind. Obviously, a lot of people don't have that in mind, but yeah, you, your theory is correct. So yeah, if you guys are looking uh, for like, uh, I guess a more safe, I don't know if how safe these stable coins are, you guys got to do your own due diligence on that. But if you're looking for, I guess, a stable pool uh, that pays you an APR that you don't have to worry about uh, capital gains, I guess, entering the pool, this would be a sort of a good pool you could enter as well as um, I believe you can take your liquidity from over here and there's sort of a pulse X single sided staking. And I'm not sure how advanced this gets, uh, especially with all taxes and whatnot. But I guess you can take your bridge stable liquidity and start um, compounding it in here with your Pulse X and your Prime Fux and start earning more of an APR on that as well. So there's lots of money making opportunities in this ecosystem right now, uh, not only with uh, just staking, but with liquidity providing, whether it's on Pulse X, because uh, Pulse X still has some pretty good pairs. I'm not a big fan of stablecoin pairs. I guess right now it's not too bad since I guess we're going a bit down. So if you don't mind accumulating pulse as the price is coming down, then this is a fine way to do it. But these incentive pairs are also pretty good as well. And you can compound incentive back into it as well. But I also wanted to talk about hex staking. Uh, Max, you were kind of talking about this earlier in, uh, in the stream. No one really talks about hex staking right now. And T shares, yeah. I think, are a hundred dollars, not even for a five five five. So, extremely cheap right now. I think if we look at the market EHEX, uh, right now, uh, let's see how much two hundred fifty thousand hex costs. That's two hundred fifty thousand USD. Two hundred fifty thousand hex. So it's about eight hundred forty four dollars. And if so, one thing I've been looking at is. If, if you guys go back, and I know a lot of us here probably watching have watched Richard Hart's streams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.
But if you guys go back and watch his streams, he always talks about Hex's price performance. He always talks about what's possible with cryptocurrencies, why um, these sort of price performances seem impossible, but they're pretty much plausible. So, for example, he talks about how Bitcoin, it did its 10,000x and then it kept going, right? It, it had its volatility in between, but it did its 10,000x and it kept going. Same thing with Ethereum. It did a 10,000x, had some volatility, but it kept going. And Hex... Um, now that we have this whole ecosystem crash, um, everyone's depressed, we have this recency bias that like we don't think the price can go up as high as we think it can. But on a long enough time frame, I think that lots of people will be very surprised by eHex and we're forgetting the, I guess, the time value of the T-shares and the exponential growth of the compounding interest. And especially right now, the Hex is so cheap, you're buying back essentially years of your time uh, in terms of, uh, the price chart, right? I think we're close to launch price for eHex right now, which is insane, right? Lots of people, if you were watching, if you were paying attention during all time highs, there was people who would sell their left kidney for uh, some eHex at three tenths of a penny, right? But now uh, apparently we have a bunch of sellers. So eHex, it simulates compounding interest uh, when you stake it. Richard Hart designed one of the most perfect products when you think about it very carefully. And one of the things I want to share is for $844, uh, we're going to go over to, I think it's Stake Hex today, right? Stake Hex today. Yes. Stake Hex dot today. Stake Hex dot. And uh, we'll type in the 870 US, which is 250,000 hex for 555. And I believe at the end of the stake, you'll be left off with about 1.6 million hex. So we'll decrease the uh, hex payout. Uh, the hex payout will gradually increase over time as T shares become deflationary, but we'll keep it more conservative and we'll say that it increases less over time. But it's looking like even at a conservative payout per day for your T share, you are still able to take $800 right now, 250,000 E hex, stake it for 5555, and your projected hex is 1.4 million. So I'm not sure what your guys' price predictions are for hex. I'm not really sure what hex, what price hex you get to, but if let's say you get back to five cents, right, or even 10 cents, you invested $800 today, you're walking home with if it gets back to like whatever 10 cents 140,000 dollars or yeah 140,000 ish dollars off of an 800 dollar investment um but that's obviously after 5555 and that's only a 10 cents price prediction right and uh i think what one of the things that people forget is the 5555 uh one of the big bonuses you get is the you get the t every extra Every year extra you lock up, you get an extra, I think it's 3% T-shares up to 10 years. So maybe that's not totally correct. I think it's 30% per year up to 10 years, which is 300%. I believe that's the math. I think that's, yeah, I think that's right. So chat, correct us yeah. if we're wrong. Um, I think what that means is like if the T-share rate is 30,000, if you stake 30,000 hex for one year, you'll get just the one T-share. But if you stake it for 5555, you'll get three T-shares. So that's that little growth right there in the time your bigger pays better, bon not your bigger, your longer pays better bonus is going to exponentially compound your hex greatly. And you guys can ratio all this out yourself. But if you think hex can get to 10 cents, um, current e-hex pulse chain ratio if we take a look at it it's about 81 and you you guys can see here so beforehand hex was mostly bonded to usdc and it had more of a stable floor uh alex from hedron talked about this and it was harder to break through that floor of liquidity just because like usdc it's a solid asset right it's not volatile it doesn't move up and down like a uh, hex does right but now with the launch of pulse chain most of the liquidity is bonded to pulse chain and obviously with all the SEC FUD and all the sellers, the prices come down. And with liquidity bonding, Hart's Law, not only do prices move up together, but prices move down together. So what we're seeing here is Hex is basically maintaining a ratio between 70 to 100 pulse. So 
if you think, let's say, hex can make it up to 10 cents and you divide that by 100, which is approximately the ratio, you get um, pulse chain at around 10x sack, which is not too bad, right? And you guys can do the rest of the ratios like P hex, E hex, like all that kind of stuff. But the uh, potential here is a lot. Like I think we are in the 100x territory um, from what I believe. And um, people are having the recency bias that we can't go up. I was watching some clips from, I think it was the 19... 1990s or even before then and they were complaining complaining about interest rates um and they were talking about how they can never see them be as uh go lower ever again they're stuck in this high interest rate economy uh for what seemed for these people to be for as long as they can see into the future but now what we saw through into the pen or just before the pandemic was interest rates basically dropped to zero and people were used to that. And then now we're flip-flopping in the cycle. So we have these sort of booms and busts all the time in crypto. And it's pretty much normal, right? Volatility is a bug, not a feature. And I think you guys are going to look back at this chart and wonder why you didn't potentially accumulate more. A feature, not a bug. But yes, yes, we definitely get the, get the gist. Yeah, that was a... I, I don't know if you all seen the, the Burger King 1993 commercial when they start... They were introduced to credit cards. You could use credit cards at Burger King. I think somebody posted on Twitter. And people were like, why would you ever do that? It's pretty sad. You'd have to use a credit card. You can't spend $3 on a burger. You know, this stuff's never going to catch on. What if they got to call New York and get a confirmation code or whatever it's called? Like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty amazing how, how recency bias and just uh, 10 cents, 10 cent hex like a year or two ago would be like a bad scenario. Like, oh my God, it's going down that much. What are you talking about? I don't hear that. Now it's like, oh my God, please get to five cents. <laughs> Please get eight cents. I'll do anything for eight cents again. Come on. Uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, our, our, our memories are very short. That's for sure. Yes. I remember back in January, kind of where Hex had its little 1.8 cent little bottom there. Um, no one was really paying too much attention. Richard Hart came on his stream and then I guess price action started to move. But one thing no one realizes is when you're at these bottom prices, how many coins you are actually accumulating for the price point you're getting them at. Because as soon as you're off the bottom, I remember it was like 50% one day, 50% the next day, 40% the next day, 30% the next day. And next thing you know, you're out of time to accumulate, right? And you don't realize like how how many coins you're getting at these bottom prices until the price point starts to move up even a little bit past sack for pulse chain you'll start to realize like wow you know what i mean i think pulse chain got as low as 30 30 something dollars for a million pulse which is insane right maybe that goes upwards to a couple thousand dollars in a bull market so um it kind of reminds getting rationalized like going to sleep and waking up and, and having 10,000 X or something. It's just, it's just, it's, it's irrational. It literally is irrational, but the stuff can happen. Um, real quick, a task question. Great stuff. Crypto going. That was super good. Uh, refresher through a lot of the, uh, different data too. And just the, some of the stuff that, you know, I don't talk about price predictions much, but when we're looking at data and you could kind of decide for yourself, whether you think, Hey, this is, this is a system that looks, uh, looks to be bullish. It looks to be positive. looks to be healthy. Uh, or not like that's the stuff I really like to see uh, regardless of you know we think it's going to 5 10 20 cents 55 cents again whatever it is like getting getting access to that data which we have all the size to do these days that's that's a game changer